What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now Plus. I'm Alex, and in this video, I want to talk about Kim's Convenience. You know, I promised to do more movie slash television things, at least on Sundays on this channel, and I thought, let's do it. Coincidentally, my wife and I have been watching this show. I got a lot of thoughts. I know, obviously, this is a few years old at this point, but this show uh, caught something in me. I really, really love a lot of elements of this show, some things I don't like, and I want to talk about it in this video. Uh, let me know if there's any other television shows or movies or whatever you want me to do these weird kind of look backs and we'll go from there so I like the comedy quite a bit I think everybody gels really really well a lot of these people I had never really other I guess than Simu Lu um, I didn't know almost any of these people before but I thought this family dynamic I, I love the jokes I think there's some really clever threads that kind of go throughout the entire thing the show is also very awkward there's several characters I'd say actually Jung being one of them Janet sometimes being another there's some extreme awkwardness that goes on in a lot of the scenes and it can get like where I actually almost have to like shield my eyes because I just can't take that level of cringe but I think it's in a good way I think it's actually for the best uh, some of the situations that they put this family through are pretty funny and even I'd say towards the end probably really season five maybe season four there's a couple of pretty serious like the, the show I'm not saying it doesn't take itself seriously because it does it's not like making fun of itself or anything but they deal with some pretty like real issues towards the end even like with the family that I actually really appreciate and I was wondering you know would we ever get to these kind of things with it because oftentimes you know the beginning right before it's kind of the the title screen there'd be like a sketch it'd be like like one kind of joke or one kind of thing then they'd go through something a lot of um I don't know if they got this from like modern family I don't know where modern family got it from but a lot of like misdirections where the show wants you to believe something's gonna happen or the characters think something is gonna happen and then something else happens and that's kind of like the joke I really noticed that a lot with modern family granted I don't watch much television uh, you know a lot of things maybe even stem back to like the office but I don't, I don't know where this show maybe modern family is where it gets it from those kind of like misdirects one thing I, I want to say, because it is such a prominent thing, is character development. And when I say prominent, I mean it's not really there. I was actually reading uh, some interviews or some kind of lookbacks at the show, talking about like a season six, that the show really wasn't supposed to end at season five. I think they had either one or two more seasons after that, like ready to go. They were renewed, they were able to do it, and the producers actually left. So the final season feels rushed. It doesn't feel like an ending. And and at the time, I told my wife, well, maybe we were spoiled with Modern Family because, you know, we absolutely adore that show. And that show got to do what it wanted for more than a decade, right? 11 seasons. It got to tell any story, any kind of arc with their characters. And then it got to do an actual conclusion. Several episodes, really, but specifically the last episode of Just Saying Goodbye. This show didn't really do that. So it wasn't a good final season, I would say, in that way of kind of living up to it. And then some of the character things that they did, oh, before I lose my train of thought like I just did five seconds ago, where this is all coming from is I think even Simu Liu had pointed out that like some of these characters didn't have the development that they should have. I, I agree with him. I think there are some really, the things that they do with Janet, I feel like they just kind of like forget to kind of progress her forward she's stuck oftentimes the decision to end you know Jung and Shannon is like and really the last like two or three episodes it doesn't look like that's coming for the majority of the final season and then it just you know kind of happens it's nuts and they do that with most of if not all of the characters there's kind of like there's kind of like seeds where it's like okay are you gonna do something with this you know situation or are you gonna do something with this relationship and then either they forget about it, drop it immediately, or, you know, whatever it may be. It, it's so odd, and it's very off-putting. This fine, And I would say the final season really does that the most because, you know, as you're watching seasons one, two, three, you're like, okay, I'll play with, like, each episode kind of being... I, and I can appreciate that to a degree. Each episode is its own standalone thing. Each episode kind of lives on its own, and I guess they connect a little bit. But, you know, when, when you get to the later seasons and, you know, like Mr. Kim, right, the dad, and even Jung, they have this, like, on-again, off-again relationship. But pretty much after the first couple seasons, whenever they see each other, 
you know, they have fights, but they're largely good. But then the show paints it as like they just they cannot be in each other's lives. They won't be in each other's lives. And it's like, well, really, because every time they are together, they, you know, again, there's like some sort of joke, some misunderstanding, some something. But there's always something there uh, in a good way. Like they, they seem to get along at least enough, and yet they always keep them apart. So I, I think that's a pretty solid example. They do that with a lot of these characters where they do something, you think progress is being made, and then it's just it's just not. Um, so that's the big weakness. The big strength, I think, is just kind of the love for these characters. I think they're really good characters. I think they have a very funny sense of humor i think you know going into like the asian kind of culture i think they do it well they actually say they didn't do it all that well they didn't have i think like korean representation in terms of the writing and they got some like cultural things wrong or they just didn't go all the way when they were kind of doing uh themes or things like that to be honest i didn't notice but i mean obviously i'm not them so i i wouldn't fully know i think they did good i think I think they captured the idea that, like, this family is, like, different, or at least the parents, right? They're a little bit older, even though, actually, they weren't all that old, especially uh, the dad. They, they're a little bit older. They came from Korea, you know, to Canada. And by the way, you know, I'm I'm part Canadian, uh, and I always make fun of the whole, like, sorry. And my, my mom says it all the time because my mom's Canadian. And, uh, I mean, I could count. I, we could actually have a count of all the times in, in this show that they would say so, kimchi. Kimchi and Shannon say sorry in the most exaggerated form like if you're kind of you know if you're making a joke about you know canadians doing it they say it's so you know exaggerated it was, it's funny it's not an insult i do it purposely i suppose so i, I jab at it a bit but i, I think there's some heart there i think um, the fact that this show is very kind of like low budget very small you know i, I think it kind of gained popularity when it went on netflix and it started becoming a thing I enjoyed it. I enjoy. I wish it was actually longer because most seasons, I think, are like 10 to 13 episodes. You know, they're the classic 20, 22 minutes long. So there's not too, too many of them. Um, you know, it's like half the length of a modern family season. And then there's less than half the amount of seasons. So it's not enough time. I think they and I think they could keep going. And I think there was just more to the show that they could have evolved. And they didn't. So not the perfect show. But one that I really liked, and by the way, this is my wife kind of does all this stuff. When it comes to TV shows, she picks a show. I either start uninterested or that, or I just kind of say, like, I don't like it or I don't want to watch it. And then gradually, if it gets me, it'll get me. Modern Family, you know, she started watching it. And I was like, you know, I, I've heard of this show. My parents used to watch it. And I started watching some seasons or episodes. And I, I mean, it's one of my favorite shows, uh, you know, of all time. So that's kind of how this went. She watched the first like two or three on her uh, tablet or whatever. And I saw some of it. I'm like, oh, the jokes are pretty okay. And then she played on the TV. And then we, we kind of watched all the seasons together. It's It was a good time. I enjoyed it. I think there's just more that they could have done. So there you go. There's a very different kind of video for you talking about Kim's Convenience. Let me know if you've ever watched the show, if you liked it, didn't like it. Make sure you guys are subscribed. We can do more of these things on Sundays, kind of like a just a random day, throw out whatever we're thinking and, and see how it does. Appreciate you guys watching. And I'll see you all on the next one.